It was an insanely bad day for Kathleen Kennedy. It is difficult to put into words just how poorly her last 24 hours have been, but I will attempt to do so. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny has been received as well. Well, it's hard to even say how badly it was received. Let's just say that the biggest film aficionados in the world were so bored that they were talking during the movie and it is now in the reviews out there. The Star Cruiser, the Galactic Star Cruiser, the big giant Star Wars hotel closed. Willow on Disney Plus completely removed so that it can be a tax write-off. That's how worthless it is. Now we're asking, is Kennedy finally, finally facing the end? All right, folks, it's another beautiful day out there. Happy Friday if you're watching on Friday, and if you're watching on Saturday, hey, even better, right? Well, somebody who's not having a better time is Kathleen Kennedy. We'll be talking about that, and we are going to do so self-aware that Kathleen Kennedy's end, her exit has been predicted so many times by so many sources, by so many commentators that people have sort of uh, began to do the little boy who cried wolf scenario. They think when we talk about this sort of thing that she'll never leave. She'll be there a hundred years from now. Her artificial intelligence cyborg will simply be there. Her simulation, her hologram. But no, Kathleen Kennedy may actually be on the way out sometime soon. And joining me to talk about this difficult subject because of how many times it's been predicted, but now really we need to talk about it. Lauren Connor of That Park Place resident Star Wars guru, in my opinion, quite possibly the smartest man on the internet when it comes to Star Wars. Lauren, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Lauren, yesterday was a no good rotten day for Kathleen Kennedy. We, as Star Wars fans, have had lots of those days, though. It seems now, though, that Disney itself is beginning to recognize that Kathleen Kennedy is not an asset, and I'll tell you why. Yesterday, the Walt Disney Company released information that they were going to close and are going to close in September the Galactic Star Cruiser, that being the uh, billion-dollar investment they have down there in Florida where people go and dress up like Star Wars characters and LARP around for a while for a measly $6,000. They're going to close it. That is Kathleen Kennedy's baby. They announced that at a specific time, and this is what we talked about in the live stream show, the pro show yesterday that was just nuts. Never been a part of any show like that. We had breaking news after breaking news. By the way, folks, if you want to go watch that, watch us responding. As this news was hitting, it's available until Saturday at around 5 p.m. when it will go to members only. But they could have announced that information at any time. They chose not to. By the way, joining us to continue this conversation, Tommy Tables. But they chose not to. They chose to release this as Kathleen Kennedy was literally walking into the theater to premiere Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny in Cannes, France. Now, they did that when she would not be able to respond, when she would not be able to communicate. And this is devastating news that the Star Cruiser is closing. And we thought that was enough. We thought that was bad enough. And then the Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny reviews began to come out, and they were horrendous. They were terrible. They're, they're, they're mind-blowingly bad when you consider that the people who are reviewing this film were given special access and have a vested interest to give it as positive a spin as possible. And they are viciously coming out at this film and basically saying, this should have never been made. I can only presume that audiences such as you, me, and Tommy will walk away from this saying, my eyes! My eyes, no. But then it got worse for Kathleen Kennedy. It's, it's just, it's hard to believe. And so I want to read this article very quickly. And then let's talk about, have we finally reached a point where Disney has had enough of Kathleen Kennedy, where the market has had enough of Kathleen Kennedy? I know it's hard for people to believe. I get that. I understand the skepticism that she'll ever leave. But let's read. On the same day that all of that happened, and Disney, again, did not have to announce all of this at the same time, nor did they have to announce it as she is at the Cannes Film Festival where she is amongst her own people. 
the uppity uppities, where she believes that she belongs. She doesn't belong at Star Wars Celebration. She doesn't belong on a YouTube channel. She belongs with the world elite. But they came out with this on that same day, ruining her, ruining her best day. This out of The Hollywood Reporter by Leslie Goldberg. Why the last man, Willow, among dozens of shows yanked from Disney Plus and Hulu. Disney finance chief Ursula, also known as Christine McCarthy, said last week on an earnings call that the company expects to write off nearly $2 billion by removing underperforming titles from the streamers. Here's what it says. As expected, Disney is following Warner Brothers Discovery and removing underperforming titles from its streaming services in a bid to write off nearly $2 billion from its bottom line. But the big news here is if you go through these, you've got stuff like Why the Last Man, Pistol, Little Demon, Mysterious Benedict Society, Big Shot. These are not the biggest things on the platform. The biggest thing that is in this list is easily Willow. Willow being the show that was a huge part of what Kathleen Kennedy said she was bringing to the table. And you can see this full list. It's, it's rather large. But by the way, folks, it's not even close to the full list of stuff that Disney is getting rid of. And this being sort of an effort by Disney to try to find money somewhere. But there's Willow down there, right? There's Willow. But Disney is sort of like an addict scrounging around in the couch for a penny to try to find some more money. They're getting rid of content that sits on their streaming service for free in an effort to round up a little money out of a write-off. And they're doing that because they've got a lot of money to spend and they're losing money like crazy. And with Indiana Jones coming out and the review being so terrible and looking at the fact it'll only be there for 12 days before Mission Impossible absolutely decimates it in the box office, this is going to be a summer of embarrassment for Kathleen Kennedy. Yesterday was a day of destruction for Kathleen Kennedy. And I just wonder how much longer she can last. So, Lorne, Starting with you, do you think that we have finally reached the end era of Kathleen Kennedy, or is she just so impervious, so invincible to anything that is her fault, that she will continue on for perpetuity? Well, I'm not going to take for granted that she's gone. Uh, there's been far too many times that this rumor has come about that, that her demise is imminent. Uh, earlier this year, my own belief was that her fate was going to depend entirely upon how, how Indy 5 did. It sounds like that's not good, but I, I, or when uh, uh, Celebration came about and when Mando Season 3 came about, she seemed incredibly confident. It is, it, she had disappeared for a good long period, and suddenly she was making all of these announcements and seemed to have absolutely no fear about her position whatsoever. My guess is what changed... Like an incompetent phoenix, Lorne. She rises. She <laughs> rises once more. Well, I, I think a lot of that was... <laughs> I, I mean, I'm speculating here, but I think a lot of it had to do with the corruption of Dave Filoni. Uh, my guess is that Favreau had been a threat. Um, I think that that threat was neutralized, and I think that gave her a lot more confidence. I think she had also arranged things to where who would want that job? Who would want to come in oh, after her great point. To, to try and clean up this mess? I, I mean, it, it, no matter what you do, whoever follows her, whatever happens next is going to be extremely difficult. L and Lauren, let me ask you the same question that came up on Echo Base Network when I was on with them. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you the same question I asked them. If I gave you Lucasfilm Studio and I said, Lauren, you're in charge. You get to fix Star Wars. You can, t you can do whatever you want. I bet that you would feel a little bit of a sensation of glee for a moment. But then what if I told you, well, you get to work with a thousand Pablo Hidalgos. That would, that would uh, remove some of that pleasure that you might feel, the idea of fixing Star Wars, when you realize the kind of people that you had to work with to do that. And then if I said to you, Lorne, how about I make it better for you? You only have to work with 499 Pablo Hidalgos, and I'll throw one Leslie Headland in for you. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I think that we don't necessarily know. I mean... Okay, so let's start with the story group, okay? Because I know that's where a lot of people go to when they're thinking about where the ideological issues are at in Lucasfilm. 
I think that the story group was sold to people as being one thing, and I think it is actually something quite different. I don't think they really have much to do with producing story at all. I don't think they have much to do with setting the direction of Star Wars at all. Uh, I think Pablo has actually been honest about that. I think that that's a misunderstanding that probably Lucasfilm felt that they benefited from in misleading the fan base and saying that the purpose of the story group is to maintain this continuity and make sure that these characters are respected uh, and, and that they can make sure that everything fits together in a nice cohesive package. I think what its actual purpose is is that when you have these people that are actually producing the TV shows or the movies or what have you, they don't know all the lore. They don't know who the characters are. They don't know what the planets are named. They don't know what happens when. So they're sort of like your Cullen nerd. Uh, we need a name for a planet that'll make people go, ooh, they named this planet that I like. Call the story group. Uh, and I think that's sort of what they do. They also help to coordinate their initiatives like the High Republic that nobody reads. But when it comes to uh, things like the TV shows and the movies, they don't have any influence over that. So well, my this- position there, Lauren, is I, I think their power has waned. I think that during The Last Jedi that they were an integral part of, of development, Curie Hart working hand-in-hand with Ryan Johnson, she being the head of the story group at that point, and then I think that they were uh, a key part of designing out Galaxy's Edge and the, and the Galactic Star Cruiser. But I think that afterwards, uh, they have not been used in that sort of a manner. And I agree with you that later on, and more recently, they, they're largely neutered. I, I think if you're talking about somebody like Kerry Hart, the executives, then I agree with you. But if you're talking about people like Pablo and Matt Martin and the, and those guys, I don't think they ever really had all that much influence. I, I, I well, think the only they, thing with Matt Martin is he's credited with helping design the Galactic Star Cruiser. So they, they do have some things that they do that are significant. I, I think that it, you gave me a hypothetical situation. If I'm in charge of Lucasfilm, if I'm allowed to try and go and fix it, the very first thing that you do, and, and some of this might have some negative consequences, because if you're talking about just the story group and the people that we tend to think of, I don't think they're really providing all that much value. Um, The danger is that uh, my position would be start firing people, start firing a lot of people very rapidly. You need to send a signal as an executive that I'm now the person in charge and things are going to be this way and you're going to get in line with the program or you're not going to be here anymore. And and you have to start having some heads roll. The problem with that is that some of those ideologues are also in your crucial departments like VFX. And so I think it depends on how deeply rooted the ideologues are there. If they're not in line with the leadership, then you might be in some trouble because honestly, at this point, ILM, I think, is the only valuable part of uh, Lucasfilm that remains. That's a significant statement, yeah. And if they're the premier special effects house, but frankly, there's lots of special effects houses. So if you're not producing Star Wars and if you're not producing Indiana Jones, do we need Lucasfilm anymore? It's an excellent point. You could outsource much of this to other studios and just keep the, the name only. Tommy, let me go to you real quick. Uh, much has been said about this p- uh, potentially being the end of Kathleen Kennedy, and we don't mean that as in she's going to be fired tomorrow, but we mean that perhaps she'll take on some sort of legacy role, maybe October, maybe uh, early next year, but that she could take on a legacy role, exit out of Lucasfilm, Disney gives her a bunch of stock, they give her executive producer credits, and she gets to go to all the nice parties, and they'll give her tons of awards, but... If Indiana Jones comes out, and we know now that it has something like a $332 million production budget, we know it's got something like a $100 million advertising budget, it's going to need $800 million to a $1 billion to make a profit. It's nuts. If that movie comes out and makes $500 million because of how terrible the reviews already are, Tommy, do you think that that would finally be what it takes for Kathleen Kennedy to be exited out of her position? Oh boy, that is the million dollar question. Um, You might as well ask me what next week's lottery numbers will be. Uh, I mean, just the the same way that Lauren said, 
we have been hoping or at least expecting the exit of Kathleen Kennedy, I think, ever since The Last Jedi came out and the fandom was fractured. And more and more as these new products come out and don't perform too well, um, you see the reaction from people and the common refrain across social media is like, how does she still have a job? Like, why is she still there? And you've got, you know, theories about what she might know, or, you know, maybe there's some backroom dealings that are going on and whatnot. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we don't know. It's mystifying. And by all accounts, she should have been gone a long time ago. Um, you know, companies like Disney have been far more, I, don't, I wouldn't say vicious, but they've been far more... Um, uh, aggressive demanding. In, demanding in terms of their talent and when their talent fails to perform of releasing them and yet kathleen has stayed on and it could be because of like i said um her knowledge of not only the hollywood system but maybe of other things as well and, and again that sort of starts bordering on conspiracy theories i suppose but that's my roundabout way of saying that in a normal world, in a normal corporate environment, absolutely. I think um, uh, if Indiana Jones underperforms, if it loses the money, it, she would be gone. And yet, we've been in we've we've seen this dance before, and we've seen how she's been able to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat and keep going. You know, um, doing things like what Lauren had said, positioning Lucasfilm in such a way that no one wanted to take it over. So whatever you might think about her, she's someone who's very smart, who knows not only how the game is played, but can play the game like a master. And she needs to have credit for that. So I would say that if there's any way, like if anyone would be able to stick around after the Galactic Star Cruiser gets shut down within a year, after... Um, Mandal like uh, Disney Plus hemorrhages subscribers in the same quarter as their flagship TV show after Willow gets taken off like taken down on a tax like uh, tax write off uh, and after Indiana Jones will most likely not perform well at all it, it would be her so um, I think the saying is hope for the best expect the worst absolutely you know I, I, I think some of the way that she might have been able to leverage her position all this time is just her extensive contacts throughout Hollywood. Yeah. There's a possibility that what they have feared is that she might have had the ability to blacklist a lot of talent from Disney uh, using her producer position uh, saying, look, I can go somewhere else and I can bring all of these people who want to work with me with me. If you don't want access to, these, to this talent, test me. Now she's in a position where that's not as credible a threat. Because who's going to want to touch her after this? Exactly. Right. And Lord, let's let's go to Tommy's point about the uh, Star Cruiser. To close this down is a huge black eye for Disney, because it's going to be visible. It is a constant visible reminder that something is wrong with Star Wars. Something is deeply wrong, because they could have reduced the price. They could have stripped down the services. They could have done something, anything, and they decided that. There's no way to keep this thing open in any format. Now, I don't think it's going to stay closed. I think they're going to drastically alter it in some way. But under its prior configuration, there was no way for them to continue it on. And so that that's going to sit there for everybody who goes to Hollywood Studios, for everybody who drives uh, down World Drive at Walt Disney World and sees the signs to it. It's going to be a reminder that it's shuttered. It's a bunker. It might as well be Reedy Creek State Prison. So, Lauren, what did they get wrong? What did they get wrong with the Galactic Star <laughs> Cruiser? And is that is that in any way connected what, with what they're getting wrong with all the other stuff? Well, how much time we got? <laughs> yeah. Go for it, Lauren. How deep you want to go? Um, I think there's all kinds of things that were wrong with the concept. I, I never agreed with this concept. One is that they were so arrogant in their pricing 
their position has been that Star Wars fans are addicts. They will pay any price to make sure that they don't have to deal with the fear of missing out. So they figured that they could price this thing at a two-day voyage, and you're going to spend four to $6,000 on it. And we'll do it because we can't help ourselves. That has changed because of the way that they have treated the property. It does not have the value that it once did. Besides that, there are issues that uh, you brought up in the past, which is that they couldn't really be true to the architecture of what things in Star Wars look like because of safety concerns. Law-proofing. Law-proofing right, the architecture, yes. They didn't really have activities that were thrilling. It's like for the, for the amount of money you're paying, you better be getting something really special for this. When you're doing space bingo and, and square dancing and a really bad lightsaber training act, and you're doing it in a time period and story period that the audience has rejected, there was no way this was going to work ever. Um, I, I do agree with you, though. I think that they will retool it. I, I think the smartest thing they could do is, first of all, do not... I don't think that it should be a hotel. I don't think it should be a multi-day excursion. I don't think it should be anything like that. What you should be doing is having more characters out and about in the parks, costume characters from the eras that people actually like. You should be doing meet and greets. You should have something like a dinner theater event. Make it more like medieval times. I oh, think that's, that, what, that's what Drunk 3PO is saying. You're on the same page with him, Lauren. I think he's absolutely right. I think that's the way, and, and you do it at a reasonable price point. I think the idea that they were going to go after these whales and they thought that there were going to be enough whales to pay the kind of money that they wanted to pay for this monstrosity. No, what you do is you get lots and lots of people in paying a small amount of money who want to come back and do it over and over. So I, I think the smart money would say, if you're going to do something like, um, uh, the meet and greets and things like I was telling you, what you do is you have different areas that different excursions, if you want to call it an excursion, could go to different areas of the park where this week it's the prequel era, this week it's the original trilogy, this week it's the Mandalorian and, and things like that. And that way you get repeat customers, you get a different experience each time you go in. That's why Star Tours works the way that it does. It's why they, they mix and match the video elements that you're seeing in there because they want you to come back. Excellent points all. I want to go to Tommy for the uh, the end of this conversation. Tommy, are you looking forward to the idea of Kathleen Kennedy leaving? Or do you think that we are at a point now where it doesn't matter who comes into the studio and it doesn't matter what we do with Star Wars, that perhaps we have passed a point of no return at least for a decade? Um, so... On the idea of Kathleen Kennedy leaving, I'd be lying if I said that that wasn't something that I was looking forward to. At the end of the day, the buck stops with her. She's She is the one who sets the tone and the direction and who provides the vision or lack thereof for Lucasfilm. So you can speak to the story group, you can speak to Matt Martin, Pablo Hidalgo, but everything ultimately um revolves around her and so i with with the the possibility of her leaving i do feel that much will depend on who they have um who they choose to come in and replace her what is necessary in a situation like that and i think lauren touched on it briefly even if you're stuck with the entirety of um you know those people who work at lucasfilm right now who who may be all of a certain um, particular ideological bent, the fact remains that if you've got someone at the top who has a strong enough vision and the will to carry that vision out, the people underneath will either fall in line or they will leave or you know maybe some heads will roll. But it's important that whoever they get in has that vision. And it's got to be a vision that aligns with the interests of the company and the shareholders, basically just someone who knows Star Wars, but who also realizes that um, it's an IP that can and should be making money. So again, to answer your question, I feel that a much, my answer depends very much on, you know, okay, again, presuming she's going, who they bring in and 
who that person then turns to for help. I think there is hope for Star Wars. I think that if you, if someone at the top recognizes the damage that's been done, communicates that damage to the to the fandom, not not real necessarily like a mea culpa, but clearly shows a new direction, um, the uncobwebbing of legacy characters, you know, bringing Luke back, making him heroic again. And then through their actions, maybe somehow, you know, knocking on George Lucas's door and saying, look, we need your help. Is there a way that you can come back as just even a, as an advisory position? Um, or having, you know, putting Favreau back in as, as someone who's very prominent uh, in the creative process. Some type of olive branch to the fandom to show them that there is an awareness of where the franchise is, but this is where we're planning on going based on what we've seen. I think that might go a long way. Like as fans, and I don't know, Lauren, if, if you agree with me or not, we, we're always looking for that one flicker of hope to keep going right? Like you can tear us down 99%, but then you give us that 1% chance of something really good. It'll kind of reinvigorate you again. Um, you know, that happened with me at the end of uh, the second season of Mandalorian with Luke Skywalker. Even just playing the new uh, Jedi Survivor game, I can feel a bit of that, um, that, that, that passion for Star Wars kind of coming up again a little bit. So I don't think it'll take too, too much to get the franchise slowly moving back up towards health again, but it has to be done in a sincere way. And it has to be done in a way that, that makes sense and that respects um, the IP. Good points all. Let's have some fun guys before we head out. Uh, let's do a prediction. Let's play a little game, a little wager. Now this is just for fun. Nobody actually knows that the assured time this will occur, but Let's do predictions for when we think Kathleen Kennedy will actually exit Lucasfilm. I'm going to say that she will exit Lucasfilm sometime between this fall and next summer. Lorne? And by the way, the winner, we're going we're gonna to buy the winner some blue milk. If it's, it's me, uh, I get to not drink blue milk because I, I don't care for it out of Hollywood Studios. Tastes like free pebbles. Do we have to milk it ourselves? <laughs> Oh, God, I hope not. That's how Luke went down the a wrong path. Lauren, when do you think she's gone? I'm going to say a year from this month. We'll say next May. Okay, next May. Tommy, when's your prediction? At the end of time, the heat death. Oh, my God. Universe. No, you can't say the end of time, Tommy. <laughs> too far, too far. Um, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go squarely in the middle, and I'm going to say around Christmas time. Okay, so well, let's 20, just say this then. Today. Okay, so, so we're all sober-minded we are all uh cynical to some degree skeptical for sure of kathleen kennedy and her departure yet i am saying that it's going to occur between this fall and next summer lauren is saying next may tommy is saying christmas uh, guys i think that our inner voice is telling us that actually this is probably getting close to the end for kathleen kennedy I don't know. Maybe hope springs eternal. Well, I, it's it may be the end for Kennedy, but where I disagree with Tommy is that that's not where the direction is coming from. It it needs to be more than Kathleen. Now this is an Iger problem, and well, if you Iger want, leaves in what a year and a half. But if you want to fix this, you have got to change the composition of the board. I think the only way that Lucasfilm has any chance of resurrecting itself at this point is if Disney actually takes to, has to take a hit. They are taking a small hit right now, but you need to have another Nelson Peltz moment where he comes to the board and says, you are going to change direction. I think it's all going to depend on uh, investors giving him their proxy vote. We're not here to tell people what's going to happen with the Disney stock. We're not here to give financial advice, but I will say, that is my complete and utter speculation that Nelson Peltz is preparing something and we'll leave it there. Folks, if you enjoy content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and you can stick it to the algorithms when you click it. We're talking about that notification bell. This is not a conversation between three people. This is up to all of you to join in. Drop a comment down below. 
Do you think it's the end of Kathleen Kennedy? Do you think she's going to go on forever? Is she eternal when it comes to Lucasfilm? And don't forget that members, you all somehow had the fortitude and the forethought to decide that we needed a crying Kathleen Kennedy emoji for this channel. So members, if you're out there, flood the comments with crying Kathleen Kennedy emojis and tell us, when do you think that she will actually be gone? Well, we hope you've had a good time. I think many of you out there have, considering the last 24 to 48 hours. We take no joy in the loss of jobs for people who have been working at the Galactic Star Cruiser. We take no joy in Harrison Ford and John Williams having a final film that doesn't seem like it's going to be up to par. But it is nice to see Kathleen Kennedy finally, finally being held responsible for some of the stuff she's been up to, even if she's not yet out of the position. Folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and always keep having fun. Say it ain't so. This just in. Disney lost money on another movie. Why, that can't be. I thought that John Lasseter fella over at Pixar was cranking out the latest hits and Marvel was unstoppable and Disney princesses were a thing and Star Wars was a multi-billion dollar money-making franchise. I overheard you talking about Disney and wanted to let you know you're really behind the ball. If you were uh, getting great articles from thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel, you'd actually be ahead of the culture curve and have entertainment explained. <laughs>